Hello, everyone. I'm Fei Fei Liao. My pronouns are she and her. This is the podcast series Voices of Us. I'm the host, talking with our amazing speakers about LGBTQIA+ international student stories and share some learnings with you. In this episode, let's find out how Jin and Liz have been navigating their relationships in romance, family, and friends. Welcome, Jin and Liz. Hello, everyone. My name is Jin.、Um, I use the pronoun she/her.、Um, I'm coming from China, and、um, I arrived in Australia as an international student back in 2011 when I was 16. And yeah, I'm now working full time as a sustainability profession.、I'll、pass on to you, Liz. Hey everyone, my name is Liz.、Um, I came to Australia about six years ago as an international student, and、um, yeah, now I work as a landscape architect in Melbourne. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And is that okay to discuss your relationship with our audiences? Yeah, of course, it's fine. We've、yeah. been together for four years. Wow. Now four years. So how did it start? We start from an app called Riola. Yeah, less <laughs> than the version of a,、um, Tinder. Tinder, I'll、yeah. say it's an online dating community for、um, Chinese lesbian、um, community. Yeah, and now I think it's getting more and more international. There's some like foreign faces start to yeah coming up. That's how we met each other. Wow, interesting. Starting with the dating apps, is that. Like、uh, your normal way to get to know other people, or like what jumped into your mind when you started to use it? I mean, not the normal way, but as you growing up, it's just harder and harder for you to meet new people. Like when you were in school, you have your schoolmates, you have like all the friends from different grades, and、uh, yeah, you just got a lot of chance to meet new people. But after you graduate. Uh, you're about to jump into work. I don't know. It's just getting very hard to meet new people in the real life and the meet actual、uh, good friend, good people sometimes. So I think yeah, online app is just a efficient way to like say hi. And if you like, you don't like that person, just never say hi again. So、mm. is that the same reason and intention for you as well, Jin? Well, like, I mean. On a daily basis, the chances that you're gonna run into a lesbian or LGBTIQ friend it's pretty low.、Um, so it's just using app is such an efficient way、um, to narrow down that filter to making sure that you run into the people walking from the same shoes. You know, you running into people from your own community, so you don't need to explain all things again. So people come together, make friends, or go on dates. Um, with the basic fundamental understanding of each other, so I think that just、um, fun and、um, easier and、um, less of the barriers when you do friends makings and datings. So yeah. But, but were you looking for friends and some genuine connections, or are you looking for a genuine relationship? I guess it's really flexible and fluid, really. So we didn't set much. We didn't set much criteria when we're using the app. I I assume I for lots of people as well. So when I first using the app, you just want to make connection. Um, so that connection can go into a friends, a date, perhaps a romantic relationship. But I wouldn't normally define it. Um, but most likely for me back then was connection with people, um, from the same background as queer. Hmm. Yeah, for me, I was more like. Looking for someone to kill the time together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess it's a pretty pretty good timing for us to meet back then.、Um, yeah. When she just finished masters and I also finished my bachelor's, we both at the stage of our life that it's more chill, nothing really to do at that moment in time. Yeah. So we we have a bit of time for each other to explore. Yeah, but what's the difference between the dating app and you know, like all the social media platforms? We have Instagram, Facebook, WeChat, and you can still make friends in real life as well. Like, uh, what what made you want to use the dating app? For me, really, I think it's um. It's actually a really good question because you reminded me that when you make friends on WeChat, Facebook, or you know, you know, you're running into a new group of people, um. 
you make friends based on your similarities in your common interests, right? You don't make friends as whether or not you're queer. But nowadays that there are more queer groups, so you can join for the common purpose. But using Rella as a social media to make friends and dating is just, as I said before, you once you are a member, you are a user of that app, it automatically people know that you are part of the community. And yeah, so what made you feel uncomfortable mm. disclosing you uh, that you were a queer? I think for me, the uncomfortableness really, um, at a, on a get-go, I will, I will say judgment from people, but also when I had a second thought, it's actually the uncomfortableness associated with my own uncertainty of my identity. That uncomfortableness really arising, okay, what I... I I don't even know who am I, I, where am I at in my life, how do I disclose? Am I disclosing right? Am I disclosing only part of me? Am I disclosing um, something that in the future me will say, no, 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 that's not you. So that uncomfortableness really com- comes into my, my own uncertainty. Do you feel the, the older generation mm-hmm. back in your home country is similar different from the older generations here like you wouldn't disclose your intimate relationships back home but what about here you know with the people you you feel it's a kind of a more open-minded environment but what, what about the older generation here i don't think it's open-minded it's just like um i feel like they are a bit more ahead like the people in here in australia I feel like overall, overall, yes. Like their thinking, like their social accept level, a bit more ahead. I would say, like if it's in fifty years when we are old as them, we will be totally fine with this kind of things. I think I feel our generation. Mm. Um. Yeah. So I think I don't think they are more open minded. I just think they are a little bit ahead. But yeah, we'll be there. In terms of social development, you reckon? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So for me personally, when I I remember when I first came to Australia, 2011, and then I moved into with the Australian mother, that's what I call her because she's my, back then she was my homestay. She was 42, 43 back then. So I wouldn't say she's an older generation, but definitely Mm. in a different generation to me. And back then I already started to explore lesbianism. And then... Mm. I do not feel comfortable telling her. And n- I think that completely because of uh, a fear of being judged or fear of being um, unable to answer any of the questions she might throw to me. So I would rather just keep it as a secret. So I wouldn't tell her anything about my personal relationship with my uh, bad then girlfriend. But yeah, so definitely not not as comfortable because as I said, I was still figuring out at that age of 17, how could I possibly tell someone things I'm not even sure about. But you were not thinking about to look for someone, you know, to give you advice? Um, yes, but um, it's not as... Um, it's not as common, I reckon. Like back then at school... It's not as common as in now, like there are queer topics that is being discussed all over the place in a school community or social club community or I don't know, different settings. Like now that NGV has a it has a queer on the flag, on the signage, on everywhere. Mm-hmm. So people can see it. It's more visible. But back then it's not as visible. What visible is still the stray people and um so I, I still didn't see much uh, queer friends around me and queer older generation even I couldn't see any queer older generation for instance for now 2021 last year I had a mentor um, at work and she was probably at her late 50 and she is a queer and she's with her partner for more than 20 years and that mm. excites me because that is not common here because most of the family I see it's 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 um it's it's from straight family so you wouldn't go for them for advice. You will go for someone with the same, um, you know, backgrounds. So then they understand you in a get-go um, rather than you need to explain. Because my home said, um back then she was, uh, she, was, uh, she was a straight Single lady. Mom. So there's no p- 
point、mm. telling her all all of the struggle I went through. Yeah. yeah, because I think it is interesting if you think about now, right? If you think about now and compare a very healthy heterosexual relationship and compare with a homosexual healthy relationship, do you think they are the same or different? And what's different. A, what's what's the difference? What's the difference there? I think in order to be a healthy homosexual couple, first of all, they must be so solid in their personalities and、um, relationship foundation, because that when homosexual couples will went through so much stuff that heterosexual wouldn't need to go through. For example, for instance, a marriage question, kids,、um, especially if you're a gay couple, that's more difficult to have kids, and、um, whether or not、so、you all couples will have. That conversation about the future, whether or not they want to marry, whether or not they want to have kids, and that conversation becomes so natural and easier to find the answer in a heterosexual setting because everything on Google,、um, medical surgeries, everything is ready there for them. But not in a homosexual setting. I would say more and more nowadays, but not so much in the past. So when I was young, growing up, it would be excellent actually to see a homosexual couple. Um, if they're that ten years older than me, I would like to see that because I I found it really interesting. You raised that point because I never thought about that.、Mm-hmm. But I was putting my sixteen、um, year old hat on me now, and if I get offered to see one couple that was better than in a healthy homosexual relationship, I would love to see it. I would love to see how that plays out because when you're a healthy heterosexual couple, you say okay, they they must be successful. They must they must be having you know a good career. They must be quite established and in a good relationship. Maybe go on a trip every years or something, and then they maybe have a kid. Maybe they are quite good at educating their kids, and they just everyone you know、um, wish to be or stuff like that. But if that applies in a homosexual setting, you're like, oh, how could people admire some homosexual couples, right?、Mm. It must be like would heterosexual people admire homosexual couples. Be in a really healthy or romantic and engaging relationship. Probably won't because it's completely different thing, isn't it? Because for homosexual couple, for them itself to exist in that society to be accepted by all the people around them, it's already a, such a privilege、mm. to to get. Which that privilege applying in a heterosexual setting, it's a norm. Yeah, no one will think about that. It's always going to be accepted because you are heterosexual by nature. Yeah, I think on top of that, I do think another difference is、um, homosexual people. I feel are more free because, like, I think in a relationship there's a lot of social norm and social expect- expectations on you. If you are straight couple, like, you have a lot of a lot more expectation coming up in your life in your relationship, like your kids, like your financial, like a lot of. A lot of stuffs. How how you grow your family? How you like? How do a lot of things? These are there are expectation being set by the society and by your family by everyone. But as the homosexual people, we like fundamentally we just um、uh, say set no to some like to the burden to the expectation. Yeah, for example, like for a lot of like Chinese background guys, like you will need to have a buy a house. To before you get married, and that's just one of the social norm, like social expectation. That's what you need to do. If you, if you marry a girl without a house, without those financial sort of supports, then your marriage probably will be judged. But for us, like the most judge point is being a gay, like, <laughs> and a lot of other stuffs just suddenly become not as important because you already like said no to those to like said、oh, a big、okay. no to the expectation. Yeah, and. Yeah, why do you want to disclose your intimate relationship to your parents? Um,、uh, for me, I think this is a well planned, um, disclosure. Like, I need to let them know that I'm able to be responsible for my life before I tell them this. And um, so my plan was always I will like I came to Australia, I will be able to get the PR,、mm. I will be able to settle myself in a environment that. Accept me, hundred percent. Then and I can have the right, and I can have the life. 
And also, like, if you want to come out, it's always it's also a hard thing for you to find a reason to say that. You can't just like coming from nowhere and say, "Hey, mom, I'm a gay," you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, you just need to find the opportunity, find the time. And、uh, I was trying to find that, but that was too hard. So one day I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna tell them in my birthday," and that's just that's my time. Like what I said to them is like, "Hey,、uh, I am capable of taking care of my." Uh, taking care of my life, and、uh, I know what I'm doing, and I know I understand your concern. If I live as a lesbian in Chinese society, I might have those、uh, difficult difficulties. And um, but I work my ass off to be able to get a PR, to be able to stay here. And、um, now I'm telling you that, and you don't need to worry about me because. So she she will make plans. She'll make promise to her own self, saying, "Oh, I'm gonna come out after I get a PR." And then she did it、uh, exactly on her birthday. So she, everything's well planned, and、um, yeah, and that that's not so much for me. So I came out to my mom first back in 2017 when I broke up with my ex girlfriend,、um, and then she was like, "Oh, I thought because I was I was I would consider myself as a bisexual,、mm. uh, technically." And、um, technically. technically, because I did date men while I was really young age, and、um, I pivot to a lesbian. <laughs>、um, so I would consider myself as a bisexual at this point in time. And then back then in 2017, I told my mom that okay, I broke up with someone else, and then she was like, "Oh, I didn't know that you were dating." I said, "Yeah, for three years." She's like, "Oh, what the hell? I didn't know that." And then I said, "Okay, are you ready for this? I dated a girl," and then she was like, "Oh, is it this person?" I said, "Yes." Uh, and she said, "Okay." And was that person also your girlfriend? I said, "Oh yes, you were very good at that." And <laughs> and then and then she was like, "Okay." I mean, you broke up. That's fine. Just move on. Find another guy then. So she was like trying to convince me. So being a bisexual is actually quite different、uh, than being a lesbian because being a lesbian, you don't have the ability to like men, right? You don't、mm. have the ability to find a husband basically because that would betray your own natural self. But being a bisexual is a bit difficult in navigating that relationship because your moms, your family were trying to. Bring up the heterosexual part of you, not the bisexual,、uh, not the not homosexual part of it. Homosexual. Exactly.、Yeah. So after I broke up with my ex girlfriend, she every time she was like, "Oh, it's fine, it's past," and、um, it was just young exploring. We, 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 you know, it's fine. We let's go back to the heterosexual world. And then I again found. I mean, I was in a relationship with Liz, and she was, like, "Oh my god, again!" <laughs> But she all always thought that I'm just exploring. I'm still young. I'm not into back then. I was only like 22 or 23. So, by the definition, in it, it, that that age, in definition in Chinese, it's not a, a marriageable age. So she no, doesn't really care. No, but back then I was doing like studying or stuff like that. So my mom right, wouldn't right. really care about marriage or not. And then after two years we've been together. I've graduated. I had a job, and she was like, "Okay, now you need to really think about getting a boyfriend." I'm like, "I have a." Girlfriend. Not boyfriend, girlfriend. She was like, yeah, yeah, but that's not. That's just girlfriend. I'm like, yeah. So that means she's someone else I wanted to, you know, explore life with. She said, no, no, no. Like you, you gotta. I don't know. You gotta marry or something. So she's trying to convince me out of that relationship with Liz, and then trying to set me up with some guys, random guys that she, you know, her friends' sons or something like that. And then I'm like, no, no, no. And um, so she knew it, and she just pretended. She just、mm. pretended this is not a real thing. And、uh, she ignores the the um, she she don't want to valid our relationship. And one day you were just pissed by her ignorance. That's right. So one day I decided that no, I need to come out、uh, because I'm not too sure about my what my dad will react. And um, like I think last year, end of last year. So you you decided to come out because you were so pissed off. No, I feel like ready. I always want to tell them because、mm. I am. I don't like to lie to my parents. I want. I want their full support.、Mm. It is when I feel me and Liz enter into more of a stable relationship. I feel like it's um, um, something's lacking in my life. It's it's that support from them.、Mm. So I feel like I was so supported by the Melbourne queer environment, by my friends, by my. Cohort by everyone, just not my parents. So I feel because they are a really important part of my life. I want to get their support as well because queer, in me, is a really strong identity.、Um, so I want them to know.、Uh, without knowing that I'm a queer, they wouldn't understand a lot of decision I make. How was the day like for you to come out to your parents? Terrifying. Well, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking terrifying. 
Yeah. yeah. I can't even remember. I just sent... I think you blank out out of trauma. Yeah. <laughs> you just forgot I, out of like, trauma. Literally, I <laughs> can't remember. I just... Like, because of COVID, like, mm. I always wanted to talk to them, like, face-to-face, in person. But because of COVID, we are not able to do it. Mm. And uh, on the phone, I was just te- too scared to talk to them on the phone. And I feel like within that circumstances, it might be hard for me to like fully express what I want to say because mm. like I'm really afraid to hear if my mom cry. Like what if my mom cry? I'll be freaking out. Mm. So I was like, yeah, I just messaged them. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was like. Firstly, it was like, we love you so much, so we don't want to hide uh, Anymore. Our, any any part of our life for you. We just want to fully share um, what's going on, like the biggest happiness in my like part, as part of my life with you, blah, blah, blah. That's the first paragraph. People just uh, explore a little bit more with your own. Um, and the second paragraph was, yeah, I am totally understand what I'm doing. I'm capable to be responsible for my life. Now I got my PR. Now I, uh, I live in a society. There's like, I have all rights I need and um, there's no discriminations. I can live a good life. All my colleagues, all my friends are uh, just like, it's not a thing. Like there's not, no closet. Like you, I don't even need to coming out because there's no closet in this society. And the last paragraph was, yeah, we understand. Like you have your community, your friends, like, uh, your relatives and we are always as one we are happy to like work with you to work out a way to make you comfortable with your people around yeah that's right and pretty much that's it I wouldn't say terrifying it's it's a lot of um I don't know like, I feel weird like because homosexual in Chinese is 同性恋, and this word has so much negativity associated with it. Mm. Even me back then, when mm. I speak these three characters, 同性恋, in Chinese, I feel embarrassed somehow. After I tell my mom, my mom will say, oh, so you are that thing. So she, oh, wouldn't, so she, she wouldn't say, like, yeah, she you are that lesbian, thing. you are gay. She wouldn't, she would avoid to say that term. I don't think they are comfortable no, themselves. Yeah. I think they're still processing. Because your birthday is in January and I came out like right before that. So until now it's like less than six months. So I think they're still processing. So mm. we, we, so when you come out, it's really important to give them time to just process. What about with the female friends, you know? Because um, some people, they feel like once you come out as a lesbian, some female friends feel uncomfortable. They, they were worried that you might like them. Or when we, you we can... don't normally have this kind of friend because we won't make friends with this kind of people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I do remember once, you remember when we um, went to ski? Both of us, Lisa and me, we were assigned with the other girls stay in three bed- bedroom. And then the girl somehow expressed her concern to someone else in the same team uh, in the skip trip we're gonna go um, that she she's not so sure about sharing a room with us yeah. but so after she said that what was your feeling ridiculous, ridiculous. yeah we just ignore uh, we're, we're gonna stay in this in this room if mm. you want to stay you stay if you want to go sleep You'll on go, the couch yeah. you do it like mm. that's right yeah. so growing up yes i did i did so for instance in a in a gym um if people know that you are lesbian they would they wouldn't be as comfortable in changing clothes in front of you mm. uh, that's one really? of, yeah that's one of my friends she would do that but for me this is like all right if you don't feel I think it's re- regardless of your sexuality, some people just don't feel comfortable changing clothes in front of yeah. you know someone mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would treat it as it, as it is rather than thinking of it as a sexuality reason. Um, so growing up, when I, especially when I was in university with a whole bunch of heterosexual people, when when they knew that you know I'm I'm lesbian or I'm interested in women, they will behave in a more proper way like they wouldn't hold your hand they, will, hold they, your they might treat you more like you are a guy you are a guy so they mm. feel like as a lesbian there might be every chance that we might be you know have an interest in in them but do you feel uncomfortable when people are trying to shy away from you you know and that uh, you know in, in china yes. i think many girls we you know we we were very close with our good friends you know it's a quite normal um, for Chinese girls, just holding hands and a stray can be even closer than the lesbian couples. Mm, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've, I'm glad that all my female straight 
friends are quite normal. Like they will treat me as normal regardless of mm. of my sexuality. But growing up, you will run into people who will react quite differently when you tell them your sexuality, and these kind of people just won't be my friends. So that's that's what's your response and exactly. So everyone's you ask、mm. about feeling. Everyone have different、mm. feelings. My feelings、mm. are always pissed off. So I won't give a shit about people <laughs> like that.、Um, some people will feel upset. I would encourage you not to because it's not your problem. That kind of friends, you need to think about why they react stuff like that, and then you can't have a proper conversation if they just treat you, you know, as um I don't know as somehow you're gonna just like them magically. It's 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 their problem. It's not your problem.、Mm. Um. So yeah, that's my feeling. What's your feeling? I think for me, I am more like a people with. Distance,、mm. so like daily, like the distance I kept between me and the girl who might feel uncomfortable, that won't、mm. even make her feel uncomfortable. Like the distance is, is you create the distance anyway. Yeah, it's not yet to make you uncomfortable, and that's my、mm. comfortable distance.、Mm. So that doesn't really happen that much.、Yeah. Mm. Mm. The other thing is one thing about homosexual is. When you're talking about friends, so one thing I want to raise is my girlfriends are always my best friends. If you、mm. if you know what I mean, so、mm. we are so close with each other. We can tell everything that I don't probably need to share that with someone else.、Mm. And I don't think that happens in a heterosexual couples a lot because when I was in gender difference, exactly. I think that's a gender difference to be honest. Um, when I was dating men, I will always have a base best mate best. Girlfriend、mm. to talk about my relationship issues、mm. or my <laughs> my own、yeah. interest that I can share with her that I cannot share with boyfriend back then. So I always have this role in my life. But when I started to date girls, I found out my best friend is always my girlfriend.、Mm. Right? It's it's I just share with her every single thing in life in a romantic way, in a friend ways.、Mm. Um. So. Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting discovery of mine. Rec- uh, in a, in a recent years,、um, I always thought that when you dating someone romantically, you should have a dedicated friend, friends、um, outside of that relationship, so then you can dump shits together, you can do stuff together. But not really much after I started dating women, I I discover that yeah, you are my best friend to be honest. What about if you have、uh, some challenges in your relationship? Who do you talk to? That's 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 one thing about homosexual. You need to have you need to have a boundary. <laughs> that's another issue. So that's the pros and cons. I I reckon. I think um for this you just need to be cautious to not lost in your partner. That's right. So I think this is also one thing I've mentioned to. My mentor last、mm. year, who I mentioned earlier, I talked to her about this struggle I had,、mm. and she was like, you, "You know, like the Venn diagram is a merge and a merge." So、mm. I said,、mm. "Oh, me and Liz share so much life together that we almost every time when I go out with my friends, I will invite her. When she go out with her friends, she will invite me because we're just so close together. We're like two in one."、Mm. And she was like, "Yes." And I ask, "Oh, in your life with your partner, you know, two of you been together for thirty years." Do you find it difficult to have your own individual life, and then you know, and then come back together to share a life? She was like, "Yeah, obviously, it's quite normal." So that comforts me a little bit,、mm. make make me feel like, "Oh, I'm not the only one sharing this struggle."、Mm. So the Venn diagram basically、mm. is two circle. How much overlap is determined by two of you?、Mm. I bet then we're almost in one circle, and then me and Liz start. We've been really, really cautious and aware of Don losing. Or our own individual life,、mm. yeah. Part. So how do you how do you do that? We will make time to go out with our mates. We will make time to go、mm. out with someone and without each other. Without each other,、mm. um, although we share so much common interest together, we will also try to do stuff without each other. Not always together, although there's urge of sharing、mm. a lot in homosexual、um, setting and with Liz. Um, but yeah, we, I'll, I'll always encourage her to go out with her mates without me. Although I really want to join, and she will go have her life.、Uh, we will have common friends. We will also have our individual friends.、Mm. We we become a better person for because of each other. I、mm. think that is a healthy relationship definition. I would、yeah. say. Yeah, to everyone,、um, if you want to like navigate yourself through a healthy relationship, first things first, love yourself. Yeah, that's I reckon. Yeah, just. 
love yourself, be honest to yourself. So I think that assertiveness is really important in yourself to 100% believe in your feeling, in your choices um, and in your nature to be a queer. As mm-hmm. long as you fully believe in yourself, uh, it's fine. Like what, what, what the external societies or environments or even romantic relationship come to the second. Um, yourself is more important. Mm. Mm. Thank you for listening to Voices of Us podcast series produced by Co-Inventors. If you feel it's worth sharing, we'd love to share it with your family, friends, and the world. You can find all the episodes on Co-Inventors Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and City of Melbourne Libraries SoundCloud. Give us a follow and like. We also really appreciate the great support from Yakvik Hague Grant, City of Melbourne Libraries, AGMC, and RMIT Translation and Interpretation Discipline.